Okay, welcome everyone to the Data Within Reach webinar. This webinar is hosted by the Health Promotion and Chronic Disease Prevention section of the Public Health Division at the Oregon Health Authority. My name is Megan McCausland, and I'm, I'm a research analyst in the Health Promotion and Chronic Disease Prevention section. And today I'm joined by my colleague, Health Promot Promotion Strategist, Sarah Wiley. So as we get started today, I'd like to remind everyone of a few webinar courtesies. Please mute your microphone when you're not speaking. And this helps reduce the amount of line feedback and background noise, and it helps everyone hear others when they're speaking. If you choose to share, please say your name and where you're from before asking your question or providing your feedback and comments. And this helps everyone follow along in the conversation and know who's speaking. And this webinar will be recorded and it will be posted to the Health Within Reach blog following today's event. Um, I also ask that you hold your questions until the end of the data sharing portion of today's webinar. There will be about 10 to 15 minutes at the end for questions and discussions. However, you are welcome to send any questions using the chat function of the webinar at any point throughout the presentation, and we'll check the chat box for questions as we kick off the questions and discussions portion. So today's Data Within Reach webinar is titled Tobacco Cessation Programs and Interventions in Oregon. For our 30 minutes together today, we will re review tobacco use in Oregon, present data on quitline performance, and discuss the resources, outreach, and media campaigns for tobacco cessation. So I hope that most of you came upon this webinar via the Health Within Reach blog. As part of the Health Within Reach blog, we occasionally hold a Data Within Reach webinar. And these webinars are meant to provide additional data that complement the topic addressed in the Health Within Reach blog post. In future Health Within Reach blog posts and associated Data Within Reach webinars, we'll cover topics related to health behavior and chronic diseases. So I encourage you to sign up for future post notifications and to share the blog with your colleagues or other interested partners. The purpose of this webinar series is to provide a venue for timely sharing of data that we collect on a very variety of topics. We also want to provide an opportunity for people interested in health promotion and chronic disease prevention to ask questions and have a discussion about these data. So I'd like to take a minute to describe our three main data sources for this webinar. One way we collect data is by the Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance System, which is a yearly phone survey given to Oregon adults covering topics such as health disease risk factors, tobacco and alcohol use, and chronic diseases. And we also reference data from the National Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, as well as data from our tobacco quit line which I'll describe later on here. So let's start by taking a look at tobacco use in Oregon. So as of 2017, 26% of Oregon adults were current tobacco users. And tobacco use includes cigarettes, little cigars, large cigars, hookah, e-cigarettes, and smokeless tobacco, such as chew or snooze. Additionally, in 2017, 17% of Oregon adults were current cigarette smokers. The cigarette smoking prevalence estimates have stayed relatively consistent in Oregon over the past five years, between 16 and 17%. So what does smoking cessation mean? Surprisingly, when it comes to research, there are several different definitions. For example, some studies and surveys regarding smoking cessation identify those who have quit as those who have stopped smoking for three months, but some say six months or a year or more. However, it's not really that simple. Despite Mark Twain's tongue-in-cheek quote, research shows that it's very difficult to quit smoking or using tobacco and to stay smoke and tobacco use free. It takes people several serious tries 
uh, on average about six to ten attempts. And some things that can make it difficult to quit are withdrawal symptoms like stress, irritability, cravings, and weight gain. Targeted tobacco advertising can also make it difficult to quit. However, research also shows it's possible with the help of family and friends, with healthcare professionals or community support, as well as evidence-based cessation tools. And today, there are more former than current smokers. So who wants to quit smoking? Our latest 2017 data show that three out of five adults in Oregon who smoke do want to quit. So that means 60% of adult cigarette smokers in 2017 wanted to quit smoking. And additionally, just over half attempted to quit within that year. And this is similar to the national statistics. CDC data from 2015 showed that 68% of cigarette smokers in the United States said that they wanted to quit, and 55% did attempt to quit within that year. So this table shows a breakdown of smoking prevalence and cessation efforts by race and ethnicity. These data can be useful for identifying potential at-risk populations and to help target cessation efforts. And though smoking prevalence varies between race and ethnicity, the highest prevalence being American Indian, Alaska Native, and African American, I'd like you to draw your attention to the third row here. Uh, we see that the quit attempts among the populations remain relatively similar. And the last row is regarding the Oregon tobacco quit line. And Oregon adults were asked whether or not they had heard about the quit line. And again, there are some variations among the populations. And here, 72% of American Indian Alaska Natives reported hearing about the Oregon tobacco quit line, while only 47% of Asians reported hearing about it. So to put this into context, the overall percent for Oregon adults who have heard about the quit line is 62%. So these data indicate who is receiving the message about the quit line resources. So what is the Oregon tobacco quit line? It's one tool available to help people quit using tobacco pro products. The program is free and both telephone and web-based offering opportunities to use the technology of choice. And the services are provided in both English and Spanish. Um, also participants will have access to a quit coach 24 seven and these coaches will point tobacco users towards the resources and help them build a quit plan providing a personalized quit guide to guide them through the program. And participants can also receive information on current evidence-based quit aids, such as nicotine patches, gum, or medications, and these are available to some of the participants as well. And finally, providers can revert, refer patients directly to these services. So let's look at some quit line data. We receive these monthly reports from our quit line contractor who administers the program. And these re reports provide us with snapshots of performance and utilization. And so when we review Quitline data reports, we see that of those who enrolled in Quitline program between July 2017 and June 2018, 82% enrolled via the phone service and 18% enrolled via the web. So now let's look at the breakdown by age. This chart illustrates the age group distribution of those who reach out to the quit line by method of contact, so either phone or web. Now our reports show that the largest age groups contacting the quit line are between 31 and 60. And this chart shows the method of contact within the various age groups. So note the difference between access methods across the age groups. The younger populations are more often accessing the services via the web However, that switches in the 51 to 60 age bracket, and the phone becomes the more common method of access. And with those over 71, using the web less than 5% of the time. So now let's look at the distribution by gender and method of contact. On the left side, you see that those self-identified as female contacted the quit line more often than men. 
And the chart shows the percent of self-identified males and females who reached out to the quit line using either the web or the phone. And here we see something interesting in that women reached out to the quit line more often However, data show that women have a lower prevalence of use. For example, our 2017 data show that among cigarette smokers, 44.5% are female, whereas 55.5% of the smokers are male. So though men have a higher prevalence of use, they were accessing the quitline services less. And additionally, men were more likely to use the phone than women. So this pie chart shows the breakdown for insurance coverage type among quitline participants bet between July 2017 to December of 2018. So notice the high percent of participants are uh, Medicaid members are 38% and Medicare members are the second highest, 34%. So now let's look at some utilization numbers. The data here show the total number of calls and web contacts to the quit line over time from the calendar year 2014 to 2018. So notice in 2015, there's a, it's quite a bit higher than the other years. And this is due to an extensive media campaign in 2015 to promote the quit line and to help direct more people to the services. And therefore, we saw this large influx of calls and web contacts. However, there has not been a campaign since early September 2017, and later Sarah will discuss current efforts to promote tobacco cessation. So now let's look at how people are accessing the services and how the word gets out. Upon registration, people are asked where they heard about the quit line, and participants identified three main categories. 25% said that they heard about the quit line from a provider. 19% said that they heard about the quit line from TV or from a commercial. And 12% said that they heard about the quit line from a family or friend. And these data show that healthcare providers can actually have a large impact on guiding smokers and tobacco users to the quit line services. So reviewing the monthly reports and compiling the data can help us understand the demographics of quitline participants, can help us identify populations who might benefit from additional tobacco cessation outreach, and it can help us understand how the program is functioning in Oregon. It's also important to keep in mind that quitting tobacco use is very difficult and it may take people several tries and research shows that having support is key to success. The quit line is just one tool available to help people quit. Nicotine replacement therapies are also evidence-based cessation tools and medications can double a person's chances of quitting. Medical providers have the unique opportunity to help monitor and manage these cessation efforts. And tobacco users who are trying to quit may also find support through social groups, through family and friends, or mental health counselors. In addition, Oregon Medicaid covers tobacco cessation services such as counseling and cessation medication. So with that, I'm going to pass it over to Sarah Wiley to discuss some of the health promotion and campaign strategies in Oregon. Great. Thank you, Megan. So as Megan discussed, there are studies showing that two effective strategies can really help people to quit smoking. The first of those is media advertising. And as Megan showed in an earlier graph, there's a pretty significant difference between the years when the Oregon Health Authority has been able to run big cessation campaigns and the years when we didn't have the, the funding uh, to, to run that, that level of media. Another very effective way to help people quit smoking is to hear from their health care provider. And in a few minutes, I'll talk about how we're pairing these two strategies together to hopefully help more people in Oregon quit smoking this year. <clears throat> 
The Oregon Health Authority has a smoke-free Oregon brand, and we have a cessation, um, cessation arm of that brand. And the messages that we run for cessation on smoke-free Oregon try to encourage tobacco users to quit and also encourage them to reach out to the quit line or their health care provider to make sure they get the help that they need. Uh, we know that help helps uh, and that people who have counseling and medication to support their quit attempt are uh, double their chances of having a, a successful quit. So on December 31st, we kicked off our most recent Smoke Free Oregon cessation campaign, and we're able to continue that campaign um, through the end of May 2019. Um, at the moment, we have two primary campaign audiences. The first of those campaign audiences is people who use tobacco. And within that audience, we are especially trying to reach people who are being targeted by the tobacco industry and who smoke at higher rates than the general population. We're also trying to reach groups that are disproportionately affected by tobacco use, which could include having a family member or a close friend who uses tobacco. The groups of people that we're especially trying to reach with this campaign include members of the Oregon Health Plan. Uh, we know that 29% of Oregon Health Plan members smoke compared with 17% of the general population. We also know that people with lower incomes are more likely to smoke, especially those earning less than $15,000 per year. And so our campaign is also trying to reach people who fall into that group as well. Other demographic groups that we know smoke at higher rates or are at risk of establishing lifelong addiction um, include communities of color, especially African American and Native American, Alaska Native populations, young people aged 18 to 24, people who identify as lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, or queer, current or former members of the armed forces, and then people with less than a high school education. Uh, and so the, through the, the, magical, the magical world of media targeting, we're able to provide digital ads that reach each of these groups pretty specifically. And this allows us to make very strategic use of limited campaign dollars. The ad that we're running right now is primarily on digital media, although we do also have some billboards that are up in Oregon's higher population centers. Um, and we're looking forward to seeing the, the data come back in from the quit line on whether those outreach efforts were effective. A second audience that we have for this particular campaign is a little bit new for us. So here at Health Promotion and Chronic Disease Prevention, we do a lot of work with health systems to help them improve their workflows related to tobacco cessation, make sure that they are um, covering tobacco cessation benefits if they're an insurance plan, uh, and to ensure that through each of the touch points that providers or an insurance uh, company has with a patient, that they're uh, making sure that folks know the options that are available to them to try and quit. But we haven't used mass media to reach out to healthcare providers directly, and so that's one of the things that we're doing with this campaign. What we're trying to do is create a, a magic moment between a healthcare provider and somebody who is trying to quit tobacco, where part of the uh, mass media campaign has increased the, the tobacco user's desire to quit, and the awareness of the healthcare provider is also increased that the person who uses tobacco wants to hear from them. And so we're trying to create that conversation between the two audiences to um, make a successful cessation attempt a little bit more likely. So here are the few of the ads that we're currently running to reach people who smoke. Uh, these are up right now on digital media, and then there are similar messages that are up on billboards in neighborhoods with a higher percentage of our, our target groups. There are messages running in both English and Spanish. So the ads for people who smoke are pretty explicit. These ads were developed uh, several years ago, and they were part of that very successful 2015 campaign. Uh, and they use direct messages about the health benefits of quitting smoking in as few as 12 hours after quitting and then up to five years. The radio ads and, uh, that we have in English and Spanish right now are also featuring similar content. <clears throat> and then we have this set of ads, which are designed to reach healthcare providers. So these ads were originally developed by the New York State Department of Health, which found that through research that providers wanted direct information about what they could do. Um, they found that even though doctors really like to have autonomy to, um, to govern their own practice and to treat their patients as they see fit, when they see ads or they see advice, they're not looking to click on a link to go visit another training or another website. They would like the ad to tell them exactly what to do. 
So if you look at these ads, they are quite directive for healthcare providers. They say that smoking is an addiction, you can treat it with medication and counseling, and that you as a healthcare provider using medications and counseling can double your patient's success rate. Since these ads were effective in New York, which has done quite a bit of outreach to their Medicaid population and also to their health systems, we decided to, um, to borrow them with, with their permission and to rebrand them for Smoke Free Oregon. Uh, and we're looking forward again to seeing the results of these ads, having fielded them in Oregon for the first time. So now I'm going to pass it back to Megan, who will talk about our, our uh, main takeaways from this webinar. Great. Thanks, Sarah. So here are a few key points that I'd like to reiterate. Uh, many Oregonians who smoke or use tobacco products do actually want to quit. Uh, the Oregon Tobacco Quit Line is one tool to help people quit. And as Sarah discussed, there are current campaign efforts to help promote tobacco cessation that are going on right now. And it's also important to make sure that those who want to quit have access to the resources and they have support for success. And notice at the bottom there, smokefreeoregon.com. It's Oregon Health Authority's site offering resources on cessation services if you need a little bit more information. Well, thanks so much for tuning in to today's Data Within Reach webinar on tobacco cessation in Oregon. You're welcome to send any remaining questions to Sarah or me. Our contact information is there at the bottom of the screen. And on behalf of the Health Promotion and Chronic Disease Prevention Section at the Oregon Public Health Division, thanks so much for joining us today.